All right. Hi. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for part one of our summer webinar series focusing on four key topics aimed at helping you better master your financial data and financial business intelligence. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, uh, please take a look at um, our next webinar next week. Uh, sign up if you get a chance. But we will be bringing in the manager of financial systems for MNG Investments. Um, he spent a little over a year completing one of the most thorough comparisons of financial reporting tools, dashboarding, visualization tools uh, that we've seen to date. So um, if you're interested in seeing um, you know, such a great comparison, uh, it would be great to have you, and we'd love to have you in for the discussion. All right, but today, this morning, what we're going to do is we're starting the series off with one of the most common themes that we've experienced over the last 10 years, uh, whether it be smaller organizations, mid-market, uh, up to multi-billion dollar global enterprises, we've heard it time and time and again. Our projects implement new financial analytics software, reporting software, financial BI software. It's been far from successful. Uh, we've heard it so many times. The question is, why? Why do so many of these projects under-deliver or in many cases fail to deliver entirely? And to go one step further, what do you do when you find yourself in this situation? Do you continue throwing money at it? Do you continue putting time and resources into it, hoping that at some point it'll start to work the way you'd like? We don't know. These are the questions that we'd like to address today. And to do so, we've asked someone with significant tenure in the EPM field and finance software who spent much of his career in the trenches uh, working with companies to right-size these types of failed projects. So with that, I'd like to introduce you to Vouter Bourne, uh, North American CEO and global CTO of CXO Software. Powder. Thank you, Brad. Um, hi, everyone. Um, welcome to this uh, to this webinar um, with the title "Why Many Reporting Projects for Finance Fail to Deliver." And like Brad said, um, at CXO we have many experience with projects that, that fail um, because normally when we come in, there is a failed project in place. Um, let me quickly share something about our company with you, so you kind of know, if you don't know who we are, you have some, some background. Uh, we were founded in 2007. We specialize in, in enterprise performance reporting. Um, and everything that's related to how an enterprise likes to report on its data, how it likes to report on its performance, that's, that's the area that we specialize in with our, with our own software called CXO Software. We do that for organizations like um, the, the logos you see on the screen here, um, Experian, um, and, and Ahold, KLM, um, and, and many more. So many, many of our customers are, are globally operating um, and recognized as global Fortune 500 uh, customers. Um, we do everything um, in-house with, uh, with our own implementation team, our own development team, and our own support team. We have offices in uh, in Europe and uh, and USA, um, and we also have a sales office in in the UK. Before we started at CXO, we were already in the business, uh, or me personally, and and together with my co-founders, we were in the business of implementing financial reporting projects, financial dashboard projects, etc. And we founded CXO because we saw so much failures with with other tooling. Um, so let's let's have a look on on out of this experience, out of my my personal almost 17 years of experience with with financial reporting projects, which were the reasons where we saw failure of of delivery of um, of a reporting um, finance reporting finance analytics finance dashboard project. First of all, what we see many times happening is that the ownership is within IT, not within finance where it's supposed to be, but really within the IT department. We'll go into this in a second. Um, the implementation timelines, projects are, are, are typically approached as a, as, a, as a long, massive project that sometimes take months or even years to, to, to implement. Um, another thing that we see is that the tooling that is selected for financial reporting, financial analytics, financial dashboards, uh, don't doesn't connect to your data sources that contain already all the data and all the structures that you need for for these dashboards. Um, and and another thing is that that same tooling normally is actually not 
doesn't really understand how financial data works and it lacks financial intelligence and it, it lacks the way how finance people look at their data um, and last but not least um, we see that the tools that are put in place many times don't have proper self-service capabilities um, also we sometimes see tools that that are too much self-service so everyone creates uh, his version of a profit and loss statement that's also not great but um, mostly we see that IT is needed to to develop a new report and it takes weeks so let's let's have a look at each of these reasons for failure um, within IT I think the typical thing is that IT picks up things as a, as a big project like there's a little cartoon here you can you can read it yourself um, but I think the this is something probably everyone recognizes um, IT you know has other KPIs than US finance uh, team and has other has, has other benefits they they approach things more on a technology basis they want single fender approaches instead of best of reach and and we believe that's that's wrong I think the we, we believe that the uh, project has to has to be owned by finance another thing is lack of agility so new systems are are acquired and are being implemented in timelines of months to years and and of course uh, you know another little funnier cartoon is you know hey we can skip some features uh, and then you risk a little jail time but that's all uh, but again this is this is very uh, real for for many companies so the new reporting system is being implemented in in a year time and by the time it's done um, there are different people with different requirements and and the whole company has basically changed in a year but that project um, yeah in a year people find out that it didn't deliver what it exactly had to deliver so this is this is not a great approach let's talk about direct connectivity if the outcome is what you see here um, you know some beautiful dashboards and reporting and, and we'll talk about the specific features we believe that that financial reporting and dashboards would need um, but let's say that this is the desired outcome and let's look at the stack of technology that that normal modern enterprises have first of all they have their transactional systems um, could be a general ledger a CRM system a supply chain system um, different flavors of ERPs are, are, are in many companies uh, but those are operational transactional systems not optimized for reporting they are typically optimized for transactional processing many enterprises invest in EPM or Gardner calls it CPM technology um, this this stack of technology provides a single source of truth it's a corporate view on your data it's where you bring all your different systems together in one unified layer um, where you consolidate your finance where you create your corporate budget uh, and create your corporate forecast so that's a that's a great improvement but now to get to these dashboards many IT vendors will say you need a corporate data warehouse so we're gonna set up a huge project basically to get this data into a corporate data warehouse a big finance data warehouse where everything is brought back together because that's what the financial reporting tool needs to to report on well we believe this is a complete waste uh, of time and it's definitely not what you need because there is a lot of drawbacks in doing doing this the, each of these EPM tools have are very enriched with with proper hierarchies with calculations with intelligence that you that you most of that you will lose when moving to a corporate data warehouse you typically lose some of your hierarchies you lose any dynamic calculations that you've built up in these uh, in these tools uh, certain ratios you calculate on the fly you would you would all have to redo that um, you lose your user provisioning and, and and all the security that you have done already at your EPM layer um, and your uh, data might not even reconcile because you store it in a completely different format apart from that it's it's time consuming to load that data over to a corporate data warehouse it might be something you have to do overnight or, or in weekends um, and it's it's most of all it's very expensive to build a project like this it, it takes years to uh, to do this properly well if we look at at the other topic uh, or the other reason of failure uh, where we say okay tooling lack financial intelligence and multidimensional support I've just grabbed a couple of leading reporting analytics vendors and and don't get us wrong we we think these are great products it's not it's not that they you know we don't want to talk negative about about 
you know other parties in the in the market but we believe that they don't fully understand what finance needs and let me get some examples to to uh, to clarify that a little further let's first of all look at the tableau report um, by the way this is all official marketing curriculum I took that from there these companies websites so we're not you know we're we haven't generated our own screenshots or anything like this this is just what they present as best practices um, let's look at this tableau report they they try to come up with a point of uh, with a with a profit and loss statement at the bottom and you see there is completely no formatting at all possible they have to repeat labels like gross sales twice here because it's at different levels in the hierarchy and and tableau can't handle hierarchies very well and definitely not in in tables so as a finance user this is not what you want this is not something you're going to give to your business users or present to the company stakeholders um, it, it might be nice in some kind of Excel look and feel for, for personal use, but it's definitely not something you want to take a level higher. Well, an OBIE report, and again, I think this is an example of, of something that might work for a personal use case, but if you want to tell the story of your corporate's performance, dashboards like these are not sufficient. You lack proper context, you lack explanations why certain things happen. Um, and it just doesn't look good. Let's let's be realistic about this. This is not something you would proudly give to your to the CFO of your company. SAP example. Um, again, I think this this is this is the typical thing we see a lot. How how uh, analytics vendors uh, approach reporting with visualizations, with charts, with things like gauges. And and a gauge might look very nice, but what it really tells is just one number and it takes up your whole page. It's not a very optimal way of, of looking at information. Um, also the charts, there are no numbers on any of these bars. There is no real context given to this dashboard and there's no explanation. The last thing, um, and I think it's a, it's a, gr it's a great example where uh, a CPM vendor teamed up with an with analytics vendor. So this is a click example and and to, just to show how little analytics vendors understand finance, you see that they have created a stack bar chart here of different scenarios, like 2015 forecast with a 2015 plan. Who would ever be interested in seeing a 2015 plan and a 2015 forecast together with my 2014 actuals stacked? This is the most useless chart you could ever ever develop or ever deliver. And that's basically because that's what these tools do. This is the way how to handle data. And that's not what finance wants. Well, talking about the last reason about self-service, um, I already talked about it, that we believe finance needs self-service. And, and um, today we'll, we'll end this, uh, this webinar with a, with a small demo on self-service. And, um, you know, if you if you look at this comic, I think, or this, uh, this, uh, this cartoon, this is, this is very, much things people will probably recognize in their companies. Someone has an ad hoc request for, you know, I want to see my best performing reports global, globally, because we have a board meeting and we're going to select one or two reports, of uh, one or two products that we want to discontinue, and it's this week's board meeting. Well, then IT, who maintains a reporting system, says, well, you know, our next sprint starts in two weeks, and I'm sure I can get you something mid next month. And that's the timeline how IT works, because they, you know, they've apply the scrum approach and they work with sprints and um, they they and then maybe you know this is a kind of extreme example but maybe they give you something in 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 a week time it's still too late for your ad hoc request so we believe finance needs to be in control finance needs to be able to serve itself so at CXO we have one single platform that helps you to, it's a collaborative platform that helps you to do financial storytelling. It brings in narratives to explain not just what happened, but why things happen. It offers this on mobile devices. It provides further analytics, and it completely is compliant uh, regarding security and, and your regulatory uh, um, uh, requirements. So it's one single platform that does all the needs for financial business intelligence, financial reporting, financial analytics. Let's let's look at the five reasons. First of all, with CXO software, the full project ownership is within finance. The implementation timelines are short and agile. 
let's let's look on what these two things what this really means so you can you can do everything within finance you still need IT for providing you with an environment an infrastructure um, IT helps you maybe with doing backups of the system but the real IT tasks finance is in charge of the content of building dashboards of distributing reports um, and and provisioning users even that level can be done within finance that gives you the the ability to implement something in days. This this application, CXO software, can be implemented in, in a number of days. You can already have your first key set of reports that you can start working, can start optimizing and bring this agile uh, concept in place and not doing this big massive implementation of 300 reports that later on no one will really use. CXO also offers a full statistics uh, module where you can see what reports are used so you can continuously improve your reports by understanding how your users use your reports, how long, how much time they spend on a report, uh, where do they click on a report, do they print them, do they watch them on their mobile devices, etc. CXO offers direct source of connectivity to, to the leading EPM and CPM platforms. And I have a slide on this uh, straight after this. Um, CXO also offers financial intelligence and um, uh, support for complex multidimensional hierarchies because we believe in, in these CPM platforms you have built all the logic you've built your calculations you've built um, your your single version of the truth and you want to use that single version of the truth uh, and you need a tool that fully supports that so we've built in all that support and last but not least and I will put this in a I will show this in a little demo at um, at the end of this webinar um, you know we have self-service capabilities and and that means that people can can actually build their own dashboards they can also get their own reports from from a library or they can be more passive and looking at a financial story so there are, there are several options to do self-service within CXO so Let's let's have a look about direct source connectivity. This is the picture I showed before with the corporate data warehouse, and um, you know we saw the all the drawbacks on this uh, data not being live. Um, you know it was time consuming. Data might not reconcile. So CXO offers something else. Our reporting platform connects directly into every module, into every corporate application that you have for consolidation planning, forecasting. We can also connect directly into CRMs or general ledgers or supply chain systems. Um, we have out-of-the-box connectors to leading technology in this market. So we connect to several SAP uh, tooling, to several Oracle tools, IBM, Microsoft, Tegetic, OneStream, and we can also load unstructured data from either Excel or data warehouses, etc. What we bring to to bridge the gap to you know what we said tools like these need to be financial intelligent and support multidimensional um, um, yeah support multidimensional data sources. We believe that reporting it falls into financial storytelling. It's not anymore printing this 300 page book that will uh, be done every month as the corporate pack and you get no feedback of people actually read it or not. You just keep producing all these reports because you have been doing that the past 10 years. Um, but we believe that, that financial storytelling or you can call it performance reporting is, is the next level of evolution in reporting. And what that means, I'd like to share some slides of, of like, an, like an optimal concept of financial storytelling. Roughly, it exists out of three steps you do your analysis in an, in an analytics tool like, like CXO software or in a reporting tool. Um, you enrich those analysis with a value add narrative. So it's not, not, the, not the narrative that you can already see in the numbers, like we're behind budget. Yeah, everyone could see the red number there. No, it's why you're behind budget. Was it the strike? Was it a new sales team that you just hired that still needs to get up to speed? You know, you need to explain why. And then last but not least, you would take those analysis and rich with their narrative and put them into a proper order so they become a financial story. So let's have a look at how CXO supports this. First of all, let's look at, at what we believe is the best practice financial statement. 
this is a PNL. It's a summarized PNL. You can you can drill on this, and later on in the demo, I will show a little more on this. But this is something finance understands. It has underlines where it sums things up. It uses bold uh, fonts where that's needed. But probably more important, it can focus on something like gross sales um, and see the 12 or 30 months of, of history of performance of gross sales compared to budget. It can also go into more deeper detail and say, okay, I'd like to know how this was done by 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 product. Uh, and of course, I can click on different lines here to to understand the performance. Then you would need you would need the story behind this, and, and this typically in an enterprise comes from lower levels. So you have your four key regions; they all had their performance. So every region explains how they performed, and then corporate can consolidate these commentaries into into the story and combine this maybe as the first page of of the financial performance story. Well, next best practice, what we believe is that you have to communicate finance in a way business users would understand. And that's that's not as clear for every business user how, for example, a KPI like return on assets is calculated. I could be a plan director and return on assets is one of the key KPIs that's part of my compensation schedule. Uh, but I have no clue how, why this is red. Red means I didn't make my budget. I'm actually 16% behind my budget so this is, this doesn't look good well return on assets is calculated by subtracting uh, or, or dividing uh, operating income by total assets and when we look into operating income we see this this is a um, um, it's a subtraction of operating expenses from gross margin um, gross margin might be green but not enough to um, to cover the higher operating expenses and that will result in the end of the on the negative uh, return on on assets. So in the end you see what always comes down to the same thing and that's the company didn't sell enough. So they didn't make their sales targets, they were five to five percent behind, they increased their operating expenses, so return on assets is negative. That's the that's the reason why you can see in three steps here how uh, why why you're behind. Also financial stories don't have to be every month exactly the same. We believe that a financial story can be customized to a certain moment in time. Let's let's look at a specific example of something that happened in in the recent history. We're looking at a at a dashboard showing um, the sales performance of um, um, of their four key regions to compare their budgets to their actual. And the display is in a bridge. It's the year 2016, and in this company's overview, Europe shows a little under performing. We know USA is underperforming, there are certain operational issues, but we didn't expect Europe to underperform because we only got great stories out of Europe. So the next level of this dashboard, it separates the FX impact into a separate column. And all of a sudden you see that Europe becomes green because their operational result was positive. So how am I going to explain this to my stakeholder in the end? To show them, okay, you know, Europe did actually a good job. Well, this this dashboard already helps, but I probably want to enrich it with the next one, where I zoom into Europe. So I, I see the true three different uh, regions: UK, Italy, and Germany, and you see that there is an, a huge FX impact causing um, causing this uh, this this drop in the UK, and and that was in the year of the Brexit, and and people, you know, it was a it was a yes no decision, and no one probably predicted this this huge drop in the in the in the British pound compared to the US dollar. So, but this does explain why uh, why why Europe is underperforming. So this is a total picture. Building up your financial story with elements like this is, is very relevant. Industry, they tried initially to do this with Tableau. They struggled for three months um, in uh, doing this uh, with, with Tableau. In the end, we came in and we were able to build this in a couple of hours, this dashboard. It's a flux report. And uh, this flux report actually uh, allows them to explain only the variances on their PL that have a color. And the color means it exceeds a certain threshold. So in this example, it's obviously in our demo data, we've set the threshold to 15%, either positive or negative, but it could also be an absolute value. So it has to be more than a million to be material. Um, 
So they have to enter in the sheet their references and explain how that has been done. But we help them by zooming into one specific column. They, they come up with a different report, and this shows only those lines that actually have a variance um, exceeding the threshold. And even better, it's, it sorts them from the most um, from from the biggest uh, variance to the smallest, so it's it's even sorted. So they they know where to enter comments. Every line here is required to be commented on. And if I'm not mistaken, all um, public companies need to deliver this flux report, and it can be easily done within CXO because it supports you know all these financial calculations and financial intelligence that you that you're required to have. Another thing, um, and I think many analytics vendors do great things here um, with, um, with predictive analytics. Um, we believe that predictions can be really good, but only at a level where, where it makes sense. And within finance, a lot of things accounting-wise, you take decisions. You reserve, you make a certain reservation for something or not. It's hard to predict on that. But on things like software license revenue, like what you see in here, you can actually make a prediction because that's very seasonal. You can really, um, if you have every quarter four, you have a huge increase, your prediction could show that. If I want to understand this a little better, I want to understand why in USA on software license, uh, this is the P&L of, uh, of a software company. So my, my software licenses have a huge increase. I can drill to the next report and zoom into that chart and see exactly where that quarter four increase came from. I also see some coloring here. You see some green and some red coloring, and we believe that you should use color where needed. We see a lot of examples of horrible dashboards with over coloring, you know, where actually everything what's gray here was the company's budget. The red is the part of the company's budget that was not made, while the green is the part that has been um, where the company overperformed its budget. So you see some minimum colors see how you've been doing in the past. Then you see a huge increase, but you also see that in the latest budget that's been created somewhere in, you know, our current period ends here in, in probably September or October 2017, uh, I'd say it's September, um, they did not budget correctly the, the expected increase. That's what this report shows. So CXA Corporate is a, CXA Software is a collaborative platform. Now two people can, within the software, start a discussion on this. And, you know, you have John asking his um, uh, local controller, uh, Jose, he asked him, could you please check why our 2018 plan is not reflecting um, the expected sales increase? And, and Jose say, well, you know, hey, uh, this is a surprise to me as well. Let me, let me fix this and get back, uh, back to you. So this is a, a quick interaction between users on the same dashboard. It's almost like a chat function. They share the same point of view, they share the same drill downs, they share the same exact same analysis, and they can come to immediate action here. It's different than our standard commentary, but it's very effective in, in situations where you actually want to do something on your performance. Well, like I said, um, having all these dashboards together or reports together, you can build up your financial story, put them into a certain order, and CXA Software has the technology to, to bind this as one single story that people can scroll through this in a, in a next, next UI on their, um, on their mobile devices or even print this to static media like PDF or, or Excel or so having everything in one tool, and then we have different ways to export this. But if you export this to either your mobile platforms or, or view this in a web browser, it's fully interactive. So these stories are, are completely interactive, and you can still keep drilling and, and analyzing. And with, um, with a short demo on uh, self-service. Um, and, and I think we talked a lot about self-service. Um, it's probably about 10 minutes, and then I'll leave some uh, uh, time for, for, for some questions. Uh, this is the dashboard that we saw in my slides as well. It's, um, it's, a, it's a corporate P&L with, um, with a piece of commentary and some drilling uh, on the side. I'm going to zoom my browser a little bit because I can assume it might be hard for everyone to read. And we'll just use some uh, um, scrolling to, to get to all the elements. Um, first of all, it's a summarized P&L. So if I'm, I'm a group controller, I can already have self-service in the respect of, okay, if I 
if this is the P&L presented to me, but I would like to understand my direct cost, I can just open up my direct cost and understand what what's part of compensation. I can go into my different types of depreciation, um, I can go into my amortization, etc. So I can I can expand this point of view, or or expand this uh, this this P and L statement. Also, I'm comparing my actual to my budget now, and um, I might want to compare it to something else. Um, let me get there in a second. Also, I'm looking at this P and L statement for the group entity. I could select one of my business units, or I can select a whole different period. So I can just render this whole report for August and see how the performance was in August, and if we had any commentary in August, and we didn't, uh, we didn't have any. So I'll move back to September. As I said, commentary is bound specifically to the point of view, so this is related to my September performance. Um, and as a next step, I can actually have a look at my 30 months performance. Well. I'm specifically interested as corporate controller in my gross margin. So I'd like to highlight my gross margin and I'd like to understand how we did the past three months on gross margin. Oh, I select a little too little. So I hover over, I click, and I select the last three months. So I zoom into the exact differences in the last three months. And, and I can go even further into detail. I can see which of my products have, um, uh, have made their budget and which haven't. So I can get into operational detail like like products. I can also, for example, look into the s several regions and see, well, within the US, we did not make our budget, but let's compare if we're growing. So let's compare this to last year. So instead of my whole variance reporting with all the red and the green, instead of comparing out the budget, everything compares now to last year. And I now all of a sudden I see last year I did um, I did about half of what I'm doing last year, if, oh, this year in gross margin. Uh, so the budget was very optimistic for USA, but we definitely have growth. Well, focusing on gross margin here, um, there's one thing that kind of lacks in this report, and that's the next level of self-service. You know, as the as a normal end user, I can now build up my story. I can I can go into storyboards. I can build up the stories that we saw before. I can add this. I can write comments to this, I can do a lot of things, but we also have power users, and power users are the ones that can change reports or um, build their own reports. They would still need they would still need an administrator to publish the reports for them, because we believe that you need something like reporting governance, you need clean ownership, you don't want 150 versions of your P&L within your company, Some, someone needs to decide which are the relevant reports, which is published to your senior management team. So we have the concept of governed self-service where a user could could maybe build his own version of a report or change a report if he's allowed, but you cannot start messing around with the published set of reports. You need to be a full administrator for that. So report creators kind of team up with uh, with administrators to, to do the publication of reports. Well, this user is one of these power users, so he is actually allowed to make some minor modifications to this report, so he goes into the CXO designer. And since this user is uh, concerned about gross margin, he would like to add something like a gross margin percentage. And let me zoom out, change this view a little. So in the middle of the screen, and I'll, I'll zoom out a little because the designer works a little better if we, if we have a little more space on the screen. So in the middle of the screen, we see the report we're changing. And on the right side, I have my settings, so I can actually define uh, how the point of view looks, what kind of content I show, how everything is formatted, etc. But also, I have an option to change the content of a report. And in this case, this is a list, it's called the PL list, and this is a re reusable business, um, business rule or, or building block, however you want to call it, because this list could be used in, in 10 other reports. Um, but I would like to add a gross margin percentage, and I'd just like to show you the ease of, of use and, and the fact that, you know, as a finance team, you can actually do that. So I just, I know I want a new item to this report because it's going to be gross margin percentage. So I'm, I'm adding a new line. By default, it checks my, my default account, which is EBITDA, but I'm going to rename this into gross margin percentage. 
so the data is still wrong. It's not showing gross margin percentage, but as soon as my report updates, and, and this happens live, our designer updates immediately when you change something, you see that I have gross margin percentages aligned in my report. What I now need to do is add a formula to this. And in I want a ratio formula, because that's the kind of formula that I need to um, yeah, to calculate a ratio like um, like a percentage. You see that we have all common formulas as you have within Excel or, or other tools. We also have, if you need more sophisticated formulas or, or more sophisticated calculations, there is a whole calculation layer we call kubecalcs. Um, but these are more user-friendly and simpler to, uh, to maintain. So I want a ratio and I want gross margin as a percentage of net sales. That's basically all. I can flag this as a percentage, but I'm gonna do that in my format um, to show you how we, how we allow formats to scale things as well. So what you now see is it shows a zero, which is normal because my whole report is shown in thousands. So I wanna override basically this as a percentage. I already see by hovering over it, it shows 0 0.36. So the calculation is correct. I have a gross margin of 36%. I just need to tell the system to format this properly. So I go into the format uh, possibility and I go um, click on the format and I can actually select one of the existing formats or I could create a new one. The nice thing of selecting existing formats is that you're using, again, your library of formatting rules. So you can define a whole set of corporate formats that reports are formatted in a sim similar way. You can set your proper defaults. So I want to use a company default percentage format. It's called percent one because it's one uh, digit behind the comma. So now it shows nicely at 36.4%. And the only thing now I need to do is um, I need to move this to become low, uh, below gross margin. This is just a simple drag and drop. I just pick it up, drop it where I want it. And now gross margin is part of, um, uh, is part of the block where, where gross margin is displayed. So now as, a, uh, as being a normal user as well, I can go back into, into the CXO uh, software environment and um, take that same report with, with gross margin costs. I can actually click on gross margin, so I see my trend of gross margin. Um, I see how my different products do gross margin, and I could add this to a storyboard to do my storytelling. So I can just pick a, a, a random storyboard, maybe this one, net sales improvements, and add the page as the last page here. And now it becomes part of a digital story pack that can, distribute it in, can be distributed in many uh, different ways, uh, like I mentioned before, can be put into static output like PDF files or um, PDF books or, or PowerPoint presentations, Excel sheets, um, or you can play it on the screen uh, and, and really interact dynamically with the story. Well, this is, this is about um, what I wanted to share with you uh, today. We're, we're running to the end of our uh, webinar. I'd, I'd like to leave some time for, um, for questions. So um, if you have any questions about um, either failure of uh, dashboard financial reporting projects or uh, any questions about the software specific, uh, please use your question window in uh, GoToMeeting. You can just type your questions. Um, if there are um, uh, many different questions then, uh, we can, we can, uh, that we can't handle uh, today in the webinar, we'll follow up on your question uh, afterwards. So. Um, uh, Please uh, type in your questions if you have any, um, and if not, um, yeah, we're just going to wrap up the webinar. Um, Brett, do you uh, do you see any questions popping up? Yeah, there is one question here that just um, came in just a bit ago. Uh, the question is, how do you deal with delayed costs? For example, in reporting, uh, an invoice comes late or the month after. Um, how do you guys handle that? Well. Something like this is a typical um, problem that you would solve in your financial systems. So CXO Software is, is the reporting platform that would you know, handle all the data that comes from your single version of the truth. So something like a delayed cost um, item on your, on your P&L is something we could, we could represent in a certain way. Um, you know, we can be very creative on things like that and put it in a separate column or uh, create a specific separate row. So there are different visualization capabilities, but the actual handling needs to happen in your underlying financial 
system because we we don't we're we don't uh, store primarily your financials that happens in your underlying system we just report on on your uh, financials yeah and that makes total sense um, another question um, how about on the fly calculations um, what do you guys do how do you handle it uh, if you want to make calculations on the fly so we've just seen an example of gross margin percentage. Um, there are there are other more sophisticated examples. So let's say I want to see my um, uh, column here, not necessarily as an as an uh, as budget, uh, but I would like to see maybe a rolling 12 month average of my actual. That's a more sophisticated calculation, but it's something we can we can do within a couple of steps. Let me let me take the challenge and and take you to that example. Uh, of adding a 12-month rolling average as a comparison. So now I go into a different list. I don't want to see my P&L, but I would like to actually to see my drop-down list. And and this is the this is the drop-down list. And I'm going to use one of the cube calculations to do this. So so I'm going to add a new item to my list. And first of all, it's going to have to category what we call actual and we have we have the option to do uh, cube calculations like like that on 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 any dimension but we normally use the measure dimension for this so um, there is a rolling 12 month um, what I need is actually a new cube calculation and that takes my rolling 12 months as a rolling average so I call it rolling 12 month average. Um, I'm gonna say, okay, it's a calculation on the measure dimension. I would like to uh, take another measure. And that measure is gonna be my rolling, rolling 12, or I think I need the rolling 12 total. Rolling 12 total. I'm going to add that and I'm going to divide that by 12 because that gives me a rolling 12 month average. This contains uh, the total of my 12 months so divided by 12. So creating this on the fly calculation, I can now give it a, a specific name. So I'm going to overwrite the name and call this uh, uh, rolling 12 month average. I save it. And if I want, I want this to become my, my primary comparison, not budget, I just hover this up. And now I'm going to compare my actual to my rolling 12 month average. And I think I'm, I'm divided at one time too much for me. Um, uh, this wasn't necessary to divide it by 12 because the number shows really small. Um, so I think my t total is already an average. It's already divided by 12. So let me remove that so we get a more meaningful number there so now you see that that you know on gross sales we do slightly worse than um, than the past 12 months or slightly 20 percent worse um, and again this is a great example of how you can handle on the fly calculations complex calculations like you know rolling 12 month averages oh it looks great um hopefully that answers it i've got i know we're running out of time here so we do have two more quick questions that um i want to throw your way uh, this one I like a lot, actually, first and foremost. Um, does this connect to PVCS and FCCS? Yeah, um, and that's uh, that's a great question. Uh, we see in the market coming up a lot of cloud uh, uh, platforms, um, and uh, Oracle has moved the part of their uh, EPM stack, uh, so they use consultations, uh, IPM financial management and IPM planning. They've created tools in the cloud, PVCS, FCCS, for we Hyperion users must have heard of this. We have a cloud-to-cloud -cloud integration to these platforms. So you can run CXO directly on as a cloud platform. You can run it on the cloud platform PBCS. We can be up and running in a day with that. So if you want to try this out on your PBCS or FCCS platform, this can be run up and running within a day. Give us a challenge and, and you would have the richness of all the reporting that you saw up and running within a day. Yeah, I do like that. And uh, keep in mind as well that um, part four of this webinar series uh, is actually all about the cloud. It's about connecting to the cloud, migrating to the cloud, and, and uh, you know, the tools that are currently available 
and you know what we can bring to uh, cloud reporting and analytics. But the last question, and we'll we'll leave it at this, and then we'll sign off. Um, can you also track projects in CXO? So I'm not really sure what that means. Um, we we have a lot of ability to uh, to handle uh, commentary, to handle collaboration. So you could use these technologies to to track projects. Um, but I need to understand better what that question means. So let me follow up uh, one on one uh, with the person who asked that question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Well, hey, better. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, I hope everybody was able to receive some insight or relate in some ways to, you know, a lot of the issues that organizations face with um, implementing new projects, uh, bringing in new software, um, you know, new capabilities, and you know, kind of the timeline and and how those projects overall um, are delivered to your organization. So with that, I will say thank you very much again for joining us. And, um, you know, please check the website out. Um, connect with me on LinkedIn. We do have three more uh, webinars coming up over the next couple of weeks um, where we will bring in uh, other experts in the field and other topics that relate to, you know, financial reporting and financial analytics. And uh, as I said, overall, our goal is to help you uh, better master your financial intelligence. So thank you very much, and I hope everybody has a wonderful day.